Just the other day, Steam came to me with a game recommendation. He said, Ian, I've been studying your purchases lately. I know you like casual simulation games, and I think you should give the coin game a try. I said, this feels like a violation of my privacy for the sole purpose of increasing your profits, but I'll give you more of my money anyway. Now at first glance, you might think I'm about to give this game a good old fashioned brutal moose roast. Back when gaming videos dominated my YouTube channel, I'll admit I used to browse around for low hanging fruit. Goofy or quirky games usually developed by small teams that I could make some easy jokes at and call it a day. I don't really like doing that so much anymore, and I'm realizing that a lot of the traits I might have criticized a lower budget game for back in the day are actually the qualities I've grown to appreciate in games that I'm playing now. So instead of talking about some piece of crap game that I hated, I'm gonna take some time to talk about a small indie title that pleasantly surprised me. The coin game sells itself mainly as a virtual arcade or an arcade simulator, so it simulates the experience of going to an arcade. Which since arcades seem to be harder to find nowadays, maybe that's a good experience to catalog virtually. It was recently released in early access and was made by a solo developer, Devoted Media. You choose between two players, a cool pop tart looking hipster dude and a girl in short shorts with coin on the butt. Yeah, I'm gonna go with Pop-Tart Paul over here, I think. And the only mode available right now is called Birthday Mode, so we're gonna play that. Looks like we get our own birthday party where our rich Uncle Phil has rented out an entire arcade so we can act like the brats that we are. And here we are, we start next to the VIP entrance to Larry's Arcade. There's my VIP personalized birthday sign and uh... I kind of feel unsafe out here. Let's go inside. Happy birthday! Welcome one and all to Larry's Arcade, home of over 15 arcade machines ready to take your parents' hard-earned cash, a prize booth ready to take your hard-earned tickets, and Teddy and the Ticket Eaters ready to take you to hell. <laughs> so we're the only human in this game. The arcade is inhabited by these little robot children, or minions. And I like to think that Uncle Phil paid extra for these little guys to make my birthday party feel less lonely, since I have no friends. You can't really interact with the minions too much, but you can bully them by choking them out on the ground for a bit, which I developed a bit of a habit of doing, which might be related to why I have no friends. As far as the arcade games go, there's a good variety of machines inspired by some of your real-life favorites. I was immediately excited to see the Big Bass Wheelin' game. I'm a big fan of spinning giant wheels, and I've played this one in real life many, many times. There's not a cyclone game, but there is an all-star hockey hut where you try your best to slap shot pucks into a goal, and it's pretty great fun. It reminds me of that one Mario Party minigame. There are a couple of coin pushers, which in real life I typically view as kind of like Plinko, except that it never actually feels like you're winning. But I've taken a real liking to the coin pushers in this game, especially Dunko. Light up all the letters and you get to spin the wheel. What's not to like? Of course, you got your stacker game, which I still haven't managed to win because I'm bad. And there's the one where you try and poop out all of the balls into the buckets. Poop bucket, what was that game called? This is another one that's really fun to play in person, and it's really fun to play in the coin game as well. I don't mean to be cocky, but I've gotten really good at it. It makes me want to go out to a real arcade and see if any of my skills carry over. I do think they need to update their jackpot noise at some point. It's the same for every arcade machine, I think, and it's a little underwhelming. It's fine, it's pleasant, but I think I need something more intense for when I hit the jackpot. Anyway, the arcade has skee-ball. I mean, you gotta have skee-ball. 
Since you can just stay completely still and throw the balls repeatedly to score a bunch of points, I can't say I'm a huge fan of this one right now. I think it needs some kind of improvement. It needs to force me to aim a bit more. Maybe you make the ball go back and forth, kind of like in that fatty bear bowling mini game. Maybe make me fling the ball like in candy stand. I don't know, just spitballing ideas. Each arcade game has its own global leaderboard where you can compete to be the ticket winning champion. It seems like such a small feature, but the leaderboard is really good at convincing me to play just one more time to move up a position or two, and it makes the arcade feel more alive, like people are drifting in and out and besting each other's high scores. Once you've spent your cash and won your tickets, you can make your way over to the ticket counting machine, which is unsurprisingly satisfying. Then you can spend your tickets on various prizes. Glow stick, stuffed coin, stuffed ticket. Whoa, wait, hey, that one uh, got away from us for a little bit. Fuzzy dice, stuffed donut. <laughs> okay, maybe we gotta change the name of this one. Huh. What's that I hear? Screams of the innocent. Well, that must mean it's time for a performance from Teddy and the Ticket Eaters, the in-house animatronic band that plays shows in the VIP party room. Teddy and the rest of his band are pretty much the icing on top of the arcade cake. It's totally unnecessary just for decoration and atmosphere, but it completes the illusion that I'm having a birthday party at an arcade. It's like I'm really there. My one request is that they need a song where they sing. They play some really great and catchy tunes, but they could really use a track where they're singing at me. Uh, otherwise, they're pretty perfect. And yes, that is a Rasta banana, and yes, you can buy a toy version of him if you win enough tickets, so it's pretty much the game of the year. And while that was a fairly complete tour of Larry's Arcade, we really only scratched the surface of what the coin game has to offer. Ah, the great outdoors. The great, slightly terrifying outdoors. As it turns out, Larry's Arcade is just one of the many scenic locations on the island of Islandville, which you are free to explore at your leisure. Uncle Phil even rented us a golf cart to get around in, so thanks, Phil. But hey, real quick, before we leave the arcade, I just have one little observation, or gripe, I guess it's a gripe. Shouldn't the sign outside of the arcade say Larry's Arcade? The coin game is plastered all over Larry's Arcade, which makes absolutely no sense in the world of the game, but at the same time, it makes all of the sense, because Larry's Arcade really is the heart of the coin game. Okay, maybe it makes no sense. But if the arcade is the heart of the coin game, then the rest of Islandville is the skin, hair, and the fingernails. Taking place entirely at night, the island offers a number of distractions for when you want to take a break from winning tickets at the arcade. First off, it's a huge map, and the fact that it's shrouded in darkness gives it this somewhat eerie vibe that I really enjoy. It's almost like I'm making my way through a horror game. I feel like we should probably make Jerry's Gas and Go the first stop on our Islandville tour. The golf cart doesn't need any gas in this game mode, but we're here for something else. Something inside the store beckons to me. I'm helpless to resist the alluring glow of a lottery scratch-off machine, like a moth to a flame, or like a fly to one of those bug zappers. Anyone who watched me play Shinmu knows that I have a habit of gambling away my hard-earned oh digital God, coin. <gasps> and it's really no different in this game, I mean, honestly. Now show me that boatload of cash, baby. Give me that boat, I want that, oh my god. Currently we're playing in birthday mode, so right now cash doesn't have any real value. Each time we run out, we can just go to the money grabbing machine to get some more. But the coin game teases a survival mode where your cash is limited and that makes these scratch offs seem much more exciting. Actually, I like to just avoid the money machine anyway and pretend that I have limited funds. 
I just need to earn a few more dollars so I can play Poop Bucket again. And, oh, nope, out of cash. So we've got zero dollars and we don't want to use the money machine. So what do we do now? Well, just like in real life, the easiest way to earn a couple bucks is to head over to the nearest abandoned, mysterious looking van. Man, I really just love the eerie vibe of the outdoors in this game. I almost hope that a day to night cycle never comes. I just really want it to be dark and creepy. I feel like it really complements the slightly creepy interior of the arcade really well. Okay, so the van is actually where we can start a paper delivery route to earn some extra cash for the arcade. Pick up some newspapers, hop in the golf cart, and you're on your way. There are a number of bright red mailboxes around Islandville waiting for newspapers. All you have to do is pull up, exit the vehicle, and put the paper in the box. You just put the paper in the box. You put it in the box. Just gotta put that paper in the box. Put, put the paper, paper in, the box. in the box. Actually delivering the papers is a bit of a struggle, but I think it kind of works well that way. These goofy physics makes delivering a paper feel like it's its own little mini game. So that's one way to earn money, but what if you want a bit of fast cash because you just need to feed your Dunko addiction right this very moment? Well, in your inventory, you do have that fancy Rasta banana you won at Larry's Arcade, and at Barry's Pawn Shop, even your trash is cash. Just dump your valuables into the automatic pawn and swap and let the technology work its magic. Oh, and when I said your trash is cash at the pawn shop, that actually wasn't a joke. If you're really desperate for some dollars and you've got nothing left to pawn, you might find yourself digging through trash cans and dumpsters for stray items to sell. Here's a helpful tip. You know those used scratch-off cards that you lost your fortune to? Well, you can actually pawn those at the pawn shop for 50 cents each which you can then use to buy more scratch-offs to try and win more cash. And if you don't win any cash, then you can use those used... All you have to do is gamble enough, and eventually you're a millionaire. That's how it works That's to buy more lottery tickets. The world outside of the arcade is still under development, but there's already a lot of ground to explore for a game that's mainly an arcade simulator. I'd love to see some more odd jobs to do, maybe some more gambling opportunities, maybe some quests or missions that I could do for the minions, I don't know. With this outdoor area, the coin game really starts straying into life simulator territory, which is just amazing, but it also kind of makes it difficult to formulate suggestions because the possibilities seem endless. I'm reminded of another game that I played and enjoyed recently, Go Vacation. Essentially just a collection of mini-games, but the addition of an overworld that you can explore just adds so much personality. And instead of getting burned out playing a bunch of mini-games in a row, you end up spacing them out by going on other mini-adventures. It can be surprisingly effective at keeping me engaged. I also want to highlight the visual style of the coin game real quick. As games continue to look better and better, I'm finding myself drawn to games with simpler, more stylized visuals. I'm really into how this game looks. It reminds me of old PS2 era games, but with some more polygons. The visuals look a bit dated, but in a charming way, like it's a callback to simpler gaming times. In my earlier YouTube days, I might have snarked about the graphics of this game, but in my old age, I found myself wanting more games that look like this. To me, the coin game has an eerie, small town at night presence. It makes me think about a documentary I saw once about a family running a failing pizza joint. I mean, that's the kind of backstory I imagine for Larry's Arcade as I play. Hey, go bother somebody else. But with robots. I feel like that was a pretty good overview of most of what you can do in the coin game right now, but the developer is actively working on the game, uh, and I'm excited to see what else he brings to the island. To sum it up, I guess I'll say that I had a lot of fun playing the arcade games, I really dig the vibe of this game, and I'm gonna keep coming back and playing. And if you're a fan of casual gaming experiences like I am, you might want to keep the coin game on your radar.
And hey, if you'd like to watch me play more of the coin game, check out my second channel where I post my stream archives. You can actually watch my first time playing the coin game and hours and hours of other gaming stuff. So go there and watch it. Thanks. Blah. 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 Blah.